Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings, and today we're going to talk about Avogadro's Law. Amadeo Avogadro was an Italian scientist that lived in the 17 and 1800s, and he stated that if the pressure and temperature of a gas remain constant, then the volume and number of moles of the gas will be directly proportional. So if we take a look at Avogadro's Law on a graph, we have the number of moles of gas on the x-axis and the volume of the gas on the y-axis. And if we take a look here, we can see that as the number of moles of gas increases, the volume of that gas will also increase. And if the number of moles of gas decreases, then the volume of that gas will decrease. Now right here it says that Avogadro's Law <coughs> is a direct proportion between the number of moles and volume of gas. So if the number of moles of gas is doubling, then the volume will double. If the number of moles of gas is tripling, then the volume will triple, etc. And then if the number of moles of, uh, of gas is cut in half, then the volume of the gas will also be cut in half. Let's take a look at an example. In this example here, we have three cylinders. And in these cylinders here, we have a gas or, th or three gases. You'll notice that the pressure and temperature of each one of these gases is being held constant. The pressure is one atmosphere and the, uh, and the temperature is at 273K. It does not change. It's being held constant. In this container here, we've got two moles of gas and this gas is at a volume of 200 liters. So this gas here is, is occupying 200 liters of space. If we take a look next door here, the number of moles has doubled. The number of moles now is four moles of gas and we want to know how many liters of space this gas will take up. Well according to Avogadro's law if the pressure and temperature of a gas are held constant and the number of moles is doubling then the volume of this gas will also be doubling to 400 liters. So the volume of this gas right here will be 400 liters. Also if we take a look next door the gas right here has decreased. Its volume has decreased to 100 liters. The pressure and the temperature are both staying the same. It's being held constant. So what must be happening here if the volume is going from 400 to 100 liters is that the number of moles of gas is also being cut or decreased by the same factor. So if we take a look the volume here is at 100 liters. It's being decreased from 400 liters. So this right here is one-fourth it's the volume is decreasing by one-fourth of the original volume. Therefore, the number of moles here should also decrease by a factor of one-fourth of the original volume, and we end up with one mole over here. All right, so if we take a look at Avogadro's law, what we will see is this. The starting volume divided by the starting number of moles, in this case here, 200 divided by 100, we will end up with 100. If we take a look over here, the final volume, divided by the final number of moles, 400 divided by 4 by 4 is also 100. And over here as well, if we take a look, the uh, volume divided by the number of moles is also 100. Avogadro's law states that the initial volume divided by the initial number of moles will equal the initial, I'm sorry, the final volume divided by the final number of moles, just as we saw right here in this previous slide right the final I'm sorry the initial volume divided by the uh, initial number of moles is 100 and the final volume divided by the final number of moles is also 100 alright so Avogadro's law can be summed up using this formula right here V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2 and once again just like in prior videos if you don't like fractions what you can do is cross multiply and get rid of these fractions so we end up with V1 times N2 equals V2 times N1 where V1 is the starting volume, N2 is the final number of moles, V2 is the final volume, and N1 is the starting number of moles. And when we're working with this equation or formula, we need to make sure that the volume units are the same. So if we have milliliters here, then the, there needs to be milliliters here. If there's liters over here, then we need to be working with liters over here. And last but not least, the N stands for the, num the number of moles of gas. Okay, so let's take a look at a few different problems using Avogadro's law. In this problem here, it says 10 moles of a gas occupies 250 milliliters. How much space will 25 moles of the gas occupy? And we're going to assume constant pressure and temperature. 
All right, so in this problem here, if we take a look, it says 10 moles of a gas. 10 moles, that's going to be your starting number of moles. And it's occupying 250 milliliters. So that is going to be the starting volume of the gas. We want to know how much space, how much space. So we want to solve and find out how much space, or V2, this gas is going to occupy if there's 25 moles of the gas. So right here, this is going to be N2. N2. We're going to assume constant pressure and temperature. All right, so what formula do we know uses V's and N's? Well, that's going to be Avogadro's law. We know that V1 times N2 is going to equal V2 times N1. And in this problem, we are asked to solve for V2. So how do you get V2 all by itself on one side of that equal sign? We divide both sides by N1. If we divide by N1 on this side, the N1s will cancel. And the formula that we're going to use to solve this problem here is going to be V2 equals V1 times N2 all over N1. And now we can just plug these numbers in. V1 in this problem, it looks like it's 250 milliliters. Times N2 in this problem, which is 25 moles. And we're going to divide this by N1, which it says is 10 moles. We'll put this in the calculator, take 250 times 25, and then divide that by 10, and we end up with 625. 625. 625 what? Well, if we take a look here, moles will cancel out, leaving us with milliliters. So let's see if this problem makes sense. If I've got 10 moles of a gas occupying 250 milliliters, how much space will 25 moles of the gas occupy? So it looks like we're going from 10 moles to 25 moles of gas. That's two and a half times. So we should end up with two and a half times this. And in fact, we do. Let's take a look at another problem here. In this problem here, it says if 30 moles of a gas occupies 12 liters, then how many moles will occupy 3 liters of space? Assume constant pressure and temperature. So if we take a look at this problem, it says if you've got 30 moles of a gas, so you're starting off with 30 moles of a gas, and that gas is occupying this much space. We are asked to figure out how many moles, so we want to solve and find N2, how many moles of the gas will occupy 3 liters? So right here, this 3 liters is going to be V2, assuming constant pressure and temperature. So once again, we have a word problem where we're dealing with N and V as the variables. And you know that that's going to be an Avogadro's Law problem. And we know that V1 times N2 equals V2 times N1. And in this problem, we're asked to solve for N2. To get N2 all by itself on one side of the equal sign, we're going to have to divide both sides by V1. And now our formula that we're going to use is N2 equals V2 times N1 all over V1. And now before we can plug these units in, or these variables in, we have to make sure that the volume units are the same. Volume right here is in liters. The volume right here is in liters. So we're good. So V2 in this problem is going to be 3 liters times N1, which is 30 moles. And we're going to end up dividing this by V1, which is 12 liters. We'll get our calculator out. And we'll take 3 times 30 divided by 12. And we end up with 7.5. 7.5 what? Well, if you take a look here, we got liters on top, liters on bottom. They can cancel, leaving you with moles. Okay, so let's see if this makes sense here. It looks like we were asked to calculate the final number of moles as the gas here goes from 12 liters to 3 liters. So if you take a look, the initial volume is 12 liters. The final volume was 3. This 3 here is 1 fourth of 12. Our final answer here, the final number of moles, is 1 fourth the starting number of moles, which is 30. So we know we've done the correct We've done the, uh, the problem correctly. Let's take a look at a third and final example. In this problem here, it says if a gas has its volume decreased from 5 liters to 400 milliliters, while the number of moles of the gas decreases to 5 moles, 
Then how many moles of a gas were there to begin with? Assume constant pressure and temperature. So if we take a look, this problem, there's a few things going on that are a little tricky. In this problem, uh, it says we've got a gas whose volume is decreasing from this, starting off at this, to this right here. So this here will be V2. While the number of moles of the gas decreases to this. So the number of moles is decreasing to this right here. So this right here, since it's decreasing to this, is going to be N2. And we are asked to find how many moles of gas. The question says how many moles of gas were there to begin with. So what we're asked to find here what we're asked to find here is the number of moles whoops the number of moles of gas that we're starting with so we're asked to find n1 in this problem here okay now before we begin we also see a second problem this here is in liters and this here is in milliliters so we have to make these units both the same it doesn't matter which one we use we can convert it to liters we can convert both to liters or both to milliliters take your pick but I'm gonna go ahead and convert this 400 milliliters to liters and the way that I go from milliliters to liters is by taking my milliliters and dividing by a thousand or simply slide this decimal three times to the left and I will end up with 0 0.400 liters all right, so now that we have the units of volume the same, we can go ahead and solve this problem. If we take a look at this word problem, we're dealing with volume and number of moles. That's going to be an Avogadro's law problem. And we know that V1 times N2 equals V2 times N1. And in this problem, we're asked to find the original or starting number of moles. So we're solving for N1, and I need to isolate N1. So I gotta get rid of V2. I'll divide both sides by V2. This will now cancel, and the formula that we're going to use to solve this problem is going to be N1 equals V1 times N2 all over V2. In this problem here, it looks like V1 is 5 liters. 5 liters. It looks like N2 is going to be 5 moles. And it looks like V2 is going to be 0 0.4 liters. So we'll put this in our calculator and see what we get. If I take 5 times 5 and then divide that by 0 0.400, I end up with 62.5. Okay, 62.5 what? Liters cancels out, leaving you with moles. So let's see if this answer makes sense. It looks like in this problem, the volume is decreasing from 5 liters to 0.4 liters. So it's decreasing quite a bit. So therefore, it looks like uh, our starting number of moles is 62.5, and it too is decreasing quite a bit to 5 moles. Okay, so it looks like this answer should be correct and is correct. And this is Avogadro's Law, and I hope this was helpful.